introduction. Okay, so oh, you. yep. Well, it's a party in here, it looks like. Yes. Look at that. All right. So, um, nice to be here. Very nice to meet you all. Um, it's my first time in Bangladesh and I'm having a lot of fun meeting a lot of people and everyone's been very hospitable, very nice to me and it's been very different from where I come from in Australia, very lively, a lot of people, a lot of nightlife, so it's really nice to be here and it's nice to see all your faces. So you're all currently doing, have done your IELTS or doing your IELTS test? Yes, all right, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to hit the slides? Yeah. Oh, you want to? Okay, fair enough. I was blocking it, sorry. <laughs> okay. So I thought I'd start by just talking a little bit about myself, my background, and how that is actually linked to UTS. So I was born in Australia, so I was born in Sydney, and I actually was lived here most of my life, which is a suburb called Little Bay. It's a nice little coastal, it's on the coast of Sydney nice relaxing um, being brought up there and then I went and completed my undergraduate degree my first class honours and PhD at UTS so basically I've been at UTS since 2007 okay so that's uh, about 15 years now I've been at UTS affiliated with UTS as a student and then I worked at UTS and I'm working at UTS college at the moment so I started as a teacher during my PhD um, at UTS College and now uh, then I became an academic coordinator in physics and materials and six months ago I got promoted to my current position which is the T&E quality manager okay so my tertiary education I did my undergrad in applied physics and I got my first taste of electron microscopy and that's what my postgraduate degrees was mainly majoring in so you can yeah keep going so I had to use machines like this, um, which was quite fun. I did a lot of research. Um, and if you go to the next slide, we'll see what type of research I did. So I programmed um, an electron microscope, so electron beam, basically to create patterns and also create three-dimensional structures of many different materials. So here it's all in platinum. And to give you an idea of the scale, we were able to create structures to the nanoscale, so nanometers basically. To give you an idea of the scale of that, a nanometer is about trying to find a soccer ball from space in, in, in someone's backyard. Okay, this is how small, really small, on the order of looking at atoms basically. Individual atoms, thank you. So, um, I did my PhD in a similar kind of field uh, and I was very lucky. During my PhD, I was able to go to a lot of conferences to show my work and visit a lot of countries. And now that I'm teaching, and sorry, you go back for a second. Now that I'm teaching as well, um, I've been able to visit quite a lot of countries around the world and see a lot of different cultures. And I'm happy to say that I can add uh, Bangladesh to that list now. So Bangladesh is colored, so that's fantastic. Um, but this is a really nice thing about doing you know further education doing a phd gives you a license to travel and to see the rest of the world as well which is fantastic all right go ahead so i'm here this week um, because we are starting up a partnership with premier university so premier university and uts college are partnering up and i'm the transnational education which basically means the offshore quality manager so we have a lot of partnerships worldwide um, a lot around Asian area, a lot of Asian countries. So we're starting up a partnership with Premier University and the idea is we're a pathway provider to UTS. So students who go to UTS college, they complete essentially the first year UTS courses um, and they fast track to UTS second year. Okay, so this is what we're providing with Premier University. So we're partnering up Barry is also a partner with UTS and they're helping facilitate this. I'm here training all of the teachers in essentially our program. So we take our curriculum, all of our learning management systems, our learning styles, and we basically bring that onto Premier University. We train up the teachers, make sure that they are all up to date with in terms of our learning styles. And 
the teachers at Premier University all need to have the correct qualifications, so we vet all of these processes. So essentially we're ensuring that our partners are going to deliver our courses at the quality and standards that we expect in Sydney. Okay, so go ahead. Oh, actually, go back for a second. So the deal is first year in Premier University in partnership with our teachers, with our Premier University teachers, you'll get first year here in Bangladesh and you're guaranteed entry to second year in UTS in Australia, in Sydney. Okay, and this is an example of our new building, actually building two in UTS. So it was recently completed a couple of years ago um, and has a very uh, state-of-the-art library and also state-of-the-art science labs as well. So they've got a super lab station, so it's quite nice. So like I said, our, our program is a pathway program and it's the first pathway program approved in Bangladesh and it's starting in uh, March, I believe, so not long now, a couple of weeks. And we're accepting students and um, essentially uh, this pathway means you complete your first year at home and finish in your country of choice. We will be offering academic English as well. Um, and essentially that just enables the students to reach the level of English proficiency needed to reach first year UTS diploma, okay, to join our UTS diploma course. And then from that point, you do one year in Bangladesh, second and third year, you complete your bachelor degree in Australia. So UTS, a little bit about UTS. Are we, is anyone here familiar with UTS? Yes. yes. Yeah? All right, fantastic. So I won't talk too much about this, but this is another building from UTS. So this is where I did my PhD in this building here. So it's building seven. So there's a few buildings around the campus. The nice thing about UTS is it's actually located in the center of Sydney. So it's actually very close to Central Station in Sydney. It's a very lively upcoming area. There's a lot of well, in terms of Australia, it's very multicultural. So you'll find people from all over the world coming to Sydney. There's gonna be many different restaurants, fantastic food to try from all around the world. There's probably a Bangladesh restaurant around, I, I think. <laughs> um, and because it's in the heart of Sydney, we have some nice buildings that are going up because you know our, our campus is nice and snug. So it focused on science, technology, and engineering, but now offers degrees in pretty much all fields of business, IT, design. It's ranked within the 100, top 150 in the world, but it's also been ranked the number one young university in Australia consecutively. So UTS is really gaining momentum in terms of its ranking in the world. Yeah. So UTS College, like I said, is linked to UTS. We offer the same course curriculum, but instead we actually build up skill sets of the students. So our aim is to really focus on student-centered learning, making sure that your learning is very interactive and engaging, so that you're also building up your skill set, collaborative, communication skills, independent learning skills. So it's important that you have a good core curriculum or course curriculum, but it's also important to us that you build up the skill sets needed to succeed in your later university life or in your career as well. Okay, these are skills that are really sought after from employers. So that's basically our vision, is making the student's experience at the center. We're focusing on the student, um, we're engaging them, and we're making it sustainable for future growth. So I won't talk too much about UTS College. It actually originally started as an English language school, so similar to the IELTS center here, so, um, but has now come a long way. We've partnered with UTS to offer all of our courses. In terms of our partnership with Premier University, we're starting to offer the business and IT. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, All right? So you can study a diploma in business or IT starting in March. There's also a second intake in July. Um, and Maisha and Arif can give you a lot more information about that in terms of there's a lot of um, really good opportunities, especially starting in the March intake. There's some very, um, I, well, I would say very uh, optimistic or really nice scholarships available. So if you want to go to the next slide there, there's some great scholarships all available. There's a lot of saving of your fees. Um, and, the, you know, being able to study in Bangladesh gets you familiar with how 
things work in Sydney while staying in your home country, save a little bit of money, stay closer to your family, get used to the way study works in Sydney, and then you can move to year two and year three in, in Australia. There's lots of scholarships available, so I'll probably leave this information more up to Maisha and Arif to discuss. I'm more the teaching side rather than the scholarship side. Um, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. So thank you very much for your attention and your time. It's really nice to see you guys and I'm happy to take any questions um, if you have any for me. Thank so you. I have a question. Oh, yeah. All right, when you were back then in your Australia, yeah. you said that you were a teacher and as well as you were a uh, student yes when you were doing your phd yes and that's great <laughs> so that's the nice thing um especially in australia right I mean now in bangladesh the, i mean in bangladesh yeah uh, when which college i read in we don't have that teacher who is our classmate yeah you know what i mean right yeah so in terms of postgraduate study it's good for us because we make some extra money on the side but we also get teaching experience and for me, I was very focused on my research, but I ended up really loving teaching. So I decided once I finished my research, I'm just going to go down the path of focusing on teaching. Um, and I never thought that was going to be the case. And that's the nice thing about studying a different course. You never really know what you really love until you get into it. And it might take you a different path, but there's many opportunities there. So th thank you very much. I think it's, it's, it was actually very rewarding for me to do that. I was very happy I went down that path. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I have another one. Okay. Why do we, uh, why are you wearing two watches in your both hands? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is si Sydney time. This is, this is Bangladesh time, right? Wow. <laughs> uh, also, I like to. I, my background is in science, right? So I always like to make sure that my health data, my heart rate monitors are actually giving correct information. So I like to have a backup so I can compare. That's my scientific mind at work, I think. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> You're very, um, very on the ball. You can, you can spot a lot of things there. <laughs> yes, sir, I am. Is there any other questions? Yes. Can I get any kind of job besides my studies on Australia? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the important thing to note is it's not just about the specific course you're studying, you're also building up a lot of skills. So say you do business, economics or something like that, you're doing a lot of maths, all right? You're doing a lot of statistics. These are very sought after fields, maths and stats for an analysis, analysis. If there's any job where you have to do some predictions, you're going to get paid well. <laughs> So, you know, you might go down marketing, you might go down accounting or whatever. There's many different pathway options there. And if you decide that you actually prefer a, a, particular, a different pathway, you can actually choose and you can, in your second and third year, you can go down a more focused path. Yeah. So in Australia right now, there are more jobs than there are people available to work them. So there's a skills shortage and we want people to come and work in Australia because there's just not enough workers and there's too many jobs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think so. No, you're welcome. Good question. Thank you for that. Yeah. If I want to go on how would I prepare my program? Sorry, what was the first part of the question? If I go I brought in Australia or America other countries, how would I prepare my program? So I think this is a good opportunity is to do a pathway program. The, the idea is you're learning how we would teach in Sydney or Australia. So in that sense, the teaching experience and the student experience should be quite similar to what you'd expect in Australia. So that's a good starting point. Um, and I think once you start to go into this mode of learning, you're really building up your collaborative, your communication skills. So they make you talk and do problems with your peers and your classmates in class. Um, and this is already building up your skill set in terms of preparing for it. Apart from this, also becoming an independent learner so you can do research on your own. You can look up how to prepare yourself. Maisha and Arif, they can give you lots of information about Sydney, what to expect, how to find accommodation. There's even, I think, Bangladesh um, 
student group in, yes. in, in UTS. So you can connect with students that are already from Bangladesh that are studying there and they can help you ease in so you, you don't feel like it's completely foreign. You can kind of have some friends there, you know what I mean, to begin with. So I think there's, like, as soon as you become, you know, you build your skill set of becoming an independent learner, you can figure out things on your own and it's really empowering. It's really a good skill to have, I think. And I think that's what I, what I took from my PhD is the skill set that you learn. You know, it's not about exactly the research you're doing. It's more building up your skills to be able to take on a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I hope that helps answer your question. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Anyone else? No, I think... Got it. Sorry, what was that? How much percentage is required for second year scholarship in Okay, I think my show will help with this yeah. one. So you need to attain minimum 50% grade in each subject to get any scholarship. So as our student in the pathway program, we'll provide a 20% gander scholarship from the second year and third year at UTS Sydney. And there are other scholarships available which you can which you can apply for and avail based on your plan. Yeah, so basically you need to, in the pathway program, you need to pass pretty much most of your subjects. The requirement is you don't fail more than two subjects. So if you fail more than two subjects, then you lose that um, opportunity. But if you pass, which is just getting 50% or more, um, without failing more than twice, then you'll have that scholarship available. Is that right? Yes. Perfect. I hope that helps. Does, is it, any other question? Okay. I think you had a question. Um, I'm about to give my A levels after four months. So I'm asking that when I'm eligible to get into UTS after I give my A levels. Yeah, so there are entry requirements, but I believe once you get your A levels, then there's just an English requirement as well. I mean, is there any chances after March session? Yes, to get in? There is. Yep. Uh, there is a July intake coming up. So when you've done your A level, and if you have uh, two, one D and one E in two subjects, so you are ready to join with us. So the entry requirements is really easier. Yeah. So there's. I think yeah. The name is Master Man, right? So I, I will keep in touch with you. <laughs> He's already. You've already got a connection. <laughs> so good luck with your results, and. Yes, absolutely. And then get in touch with Arif and um, hopefully we'll see you in July. <laughs> I believe there was a question. Did you have a question? Yeah. Sorry? Sorry, yeah, that's it. My hearing's not very good, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah. Is there any other questions? Yes. Why should I choose UTS? As we know, there are no other universities in Australia for accomplishing higher study. It's a good question. Um, well, I feel that, in my opinion, and I might be biased because I've been with UTS for a long time. <laughs> but um, we really do put the student in the center in terms of UTS college, absolutely. We want to build your skills rather than just teach you a course. It's not about a, someone standing here and just delivering and you're listening and passively learning. We really want you to be interacting and engaging with other students and to you know, build the skills that employers are looking for. Build the skills that postgraduate study is going to help you with basically communication, you know, collaboration, problem solving, independent learning, all of these skill sets are really going to help you with anything that you want to do in later life. I think that's probably the main drive that I feel that UTS is a good choice. Also, its location is very good. Being the center of Sydney is actually a really nice place. 
Um, and yeah, I think those are the two main driving points, I would say. Thank you. No worries. You're welcome. Yeah, another question. Are you still an engineer in UPS? Uh, actually, when I got my new position, uh, I'm not teaching anymore, unfortunately. Um, I miss it. I was doing some, well, I'm teaching, I'm teaching, I'm teaching teachers. I'm training teachers now, so. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> well, you'll find that at UTS, we've got high quality teachers, absolutely. Um, so it does, it's, I'm nothing special. It's every, all of the teachers are very high quality. And we're really working closely with the Premier University teachers to make sure that they're also going to offer a very similar experience. So we're working, those teachers are working very closely with our coordinators to make sure that they're delivering how we should, ex the standard that we want them to deliver at. Yeah. And I work with a lot of our teachers, so I know that they, they also teach at a very high quality. Okay, so I wouldn't worry too much. I think you'll get good teaching experience. Thank you. Yeah. After completing my course from UTS, then what should I have to do from next? Uh, at UTS in, say, three years' time? Oh, you're asking the good questions. <laughs> so at UTS, you'll also get a lot of good opportunities during your degree to take internships and to get work experience and things like that. So you can already form connections before you even finish your degree. In terms of if you're looking for work in Australia, this is a really good way to, to really get your name out there and get your, get your experience out there. And a lot of the time, these strong inter so UTS has strong connections with industry partners. So if you do start up an internship with these partners, they probably want to keep you. As soon as you finish, they'll probably want you, okay? But even if you're not interested in that, you have that experience, you can then start applying before you even finish your degree. Or you might even choose to go postgraduate, you know? So you, have, you do have options. And like I said, it's a, it's a, a worker's market at the moment. <laughs> in Australia anyway, yeah. No worries. All right. I've Any, got a question anyway. You've so, got a question. Yeah, exactly. And one thing we need to ask you about Australia, because uh, I know that Australia's capital city is Canberra. Yes. But Sydney is very known. So what's the difference between Canberra and Sydney? So I think, I'm not sure if this is technically correct, but I think there was a, a bit of a dispute as to which city should be the capital, Sydney or Melbourne. So they decided to find a spot between the two cities and make that the capital. And Canberra is in between Melbourne and Sydney, but it's much closer to Sydney, which means Sydney is really the, the true capital, I think. So, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Sydney is the biggest, well, well, Melbourne's pretty big too, actually, but Sydney is the biggest city in Australia. Probably the most, um, how should I say, has the most landmarks as well, the Opera House, the Harbour Bridge. It's a really beautiful place. Um, but Canberra, yeah, just to, just to make Melbourne happy, we've, we've made Canberra the capital, I think. But Canberra is actually quite nice. Yeah, Canberra is quite nice as well. But um, UTS is the go, I think. <laughs> so which one do you like more, Sydney or Canberra? Me? Well, I mean, I'm biased. I live in Sydney my whole life, I think. So I'm going to say Sydney is much better. Well, it's a mo lot more lively. I think Canberra not too many people there. Sydney, you have people from all over the world and you have nice, um, you know, different cultures, different restaurants, a lot more lively at night versus Canberra, I think. So I think I prefer Sydney, but I'm a biased. <laughs> yes. In addition to liking Australia, how much income can I earn a month? Oh, well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> how much income you can earn in, in Australia? Uh, look, if you're starting, obviously when you're starting, it's going to be less than when, you know, you've stayed at a company for a while, but there's also always opportunities to grow. I can't really give you an answer because there's a huge range, you know, like I said, if you're doing maths and stats and you're doing, um, you know, uh, basically you're doing predictions and modeling and things like that, you can be earning a lot of money. Um, I mean, you could be earning over 100K to begin with, 100,000 Australian. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the conversion rate. I can't do the conversion to Taka in my head. Um, 
Sorry? 65. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. 65. You can, I think with a degree, you can quite easily get a position over 100,000 starting. Um, particularly if you really apply yourself and you do well and you put yourself out there in internships. So I'd say that you know, your income is, is quite strong and I think UTS has a good reputation to, for their students finding work quite quickly and especially with internships and industry partners available um, and the wages are, are really quite strong as well. I can't give you an, a definite number but strong. I hope that helps. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, uh, what are the percentages of English and English in EPS? Sorry, can you repeat your question? What are the facilities of English in English? English? English literature. English literature. So I think um, UTS College has, uh, well, we have an academic English program. So essentially, we have, it's called Academic English Levels 1 to 5 and basically it's equivalent to IELTS but the idea is you do a much larger course. So we run 200 hour courses which go for 10 weeks and if you start on level 1 it means that you need a minimum of an IELTS of about 4 or something like this. Um, for example, Premier University, we're actually going to offer Academic English 4 starting in April and basically what that means is if you have an IELTS level of 5.5 you can join the AE4 program which goes for 10 weeks 200 hours so 20 hours per week of study and once you complete the 10 weeks you automatically get an equivalent of IELTS 6.0 so you can go direct into the diploma program just by completing the course and passing the course you don't need to do tests or anything like that afterwards we're already accredited to have an equivalency of IELTS 6.0. This is how the levels work. So AE3 gives you IELTS 5.5 equivalents. AE4 gives you IELTS 6.0. AE5 gives you IELTS 6.5, etc. But because it's a 200 hour course, our motto is similar to what we do with our diploma. It's very driven in terms of not just concentrating on IELTS, it's more about building up your English skill set, not just to focus on IELTS, but to build it up to prepare you for further study. So to prepare you for, you know, if you're going to be doing research or writing reports or essays or presenting in university, we really focus on these aspects as well. So this is essentially our academic English program. And it's, it's actually, we get a lot of compliments as to how, how well we we um, prepare the students for a university setting and even for further career progression as well. That's mainly our academic English program. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah. So can you please tell us more about the business science subject? The business side? Yeah. Look, I'm a scientist and an engineer, but I've got a bit of, I know a bit about the course structure. So business, You'll, in terms of, well, there's a student handbook, so we could probably provide you with essentially what the Diploma of Business incorporates. But you'll start with five subjects in semester one and then four subjects in semester two. That's the diploma. Um, the subjects have an economics subject. There's an accounting subject. There's a marketing and customer value subject. And there is a technical, or no, not technical, there's an academic and business communication subject. So again, it's about language as well within the diploma. So you can see that it's quite broad and, and we follow UTS quite closely in terms of first year is quite broad to allow you to decide what kind of focus you wanna take. So in terms of marketing opportunities, there's economics, there's um, finance, there's um, accounting. There's many different pathways you can take. There's even international business or you can actually lump it up with something else entirely. So in terms of business abroad, second year, you then choose a focus. So if you are particularly interested in marketing, you can go down the marketing path and you still have that first year done and dusted. You start year two at UTS. 
If you are instead interested in economics, you can go down the economics path and you've got specialized paths for these things, for these um, different pathways in business. Does that help answer your question? Okay, so like I said, we can offer you the handbook, which also shows the, the breakdown of the business subjects in the diploma. And then in terms of UTS, there's plenty of information from the UTS website which shows you what, what options you have in terms of UTS, um, in terms of doing a bachelor, and also career options after that as well. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, recently I completed my graduation at uh, Tripoli. So uh, in UTS, uh, how many subjects in engineering related subjects? And how many subjects in? Uh, in engineering related subjects. For masters? Masters. 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 Oh, in which which uh, course? Engineering subject. Electrical and electrical engineering. Engineering? Yes. Oh, I'm not too sure actually. I'm not sure on the top of my head. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, I can't help you with that one. <laughs> Where are you from? Tripoli? Tripoli Premier University. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think typically masters is two years, so you would have to do probably equivalent to 16 subjects, I would say, potentially, yeah. Or if you do research, it can be half or some subject based and then research based as well. But I don't know on the top of my head, yeah, sorry. Uh, so we can leave a card with you, you can contact the number and have the information. No worries, thank you. Sorry, I couldn't help. Yeah. What is the benefit of Bangladesh student in Australia? What's the benefit of a Bangladesh student in Australia? What kind of facilities they get after the course? I think As an international As student. student. Oh, like I said, we, it's a very multicultural country, so you don't feel like it's just completely foreign. You, you have the ability to, to meet up with, you know, also people from Bangladesh, but because it's very multicultural in your classes, you're going to meet a lot of people from all over the world. So it's actually a very, it's a very, I would say, good experience to be able to meet people from all over and interact with and learn other people's cultures. And I think that's another part of, of studying, right? It's not just about studying. It's also socializing. It's also meeting new people and, and forming new experiences and, and making new friends. Um, so I think overall, this is a really nice aspect of coming to Australia as well as what I said, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely city. Good facilities, um, nice landmarks, lots of things to do, um, and, and lots, of, lots of different food to try as well, I think. <laughs> Hope that helps. All right, is there any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> Any what, sorry? So I didn't actually on campus on campus jobs. Sorry, of course, yeah. Um, so on campus you be teaching. Okay, so in terms of on campus you can become a casual teacher or well a casual demonstrator, casual teacher, casual tutor, casual lecturer while you're studying, you can definitely do this. Um, this is typically done for postgrads, but there's also student help center, which students can actually do. There's a lot of student groups and student support session where they can be employed to actually help other students out. Um, in terms of while you're doing your undergrad, there's not too much more on campus besides these kinds of teaching and student helps and things like that. But I think if you want to do postgrad, then it starts to open up for you. So on campus, there, I was actually a technical officer at UTS. Um, so I said I was also a teacher when I was doing my PhD. I also got offered a job as a tech officer. So I was doing two jobs while completing my PhD. One at UTS, one at UTS College, and then completing my PhD at UTS. So there, there's a lot of opportunities. And I think, especially if you're going after it, and if you're asking me now, it means it seems like you have, you're driven to find something 
and you're driven to find some work experience while you're there, if you look for it, you'll find something. Definitely. No worries. Like, like uh, facilities for, yeah, so like I said, they have a lot of student groups, student advisory groups. There's a lot of social groups, many different types of social groups. So it, it might be a Bangladesh social group as an example, um, or it might be something that you're interested in, you know? So maybe you enjoy Harry Potter or something like that. And there's a Harry Potter group for fans or something like this. and. A lot of the time they, they um, create social events. So it's not just, you know, you talk on Facebook or something like that. It's also they create events. You go and have fun, you have parties and whatnot. Uh, you know, also you need to do your study, but you can also have a lot of fun with the social events as well. So there's a lot of sorts of these sorts of things. There's also student housing available right near UTS. So in terms of accommodation, there's a lot of student housing accommodation available where you can stay with other students um, in, in this accommodation. So it's kind of like you have your room, but then there's shared kitchen and living area. And if you, if you especially if you're going together, you can probably stay together for the time and, and you'll probably meet other people in these student housing sort of areas. Is that, does that kind of help you answer? Yes. Okay, no worries, thank you. Uh, I have a question about geography uh, of Australia. I've seen that a lot of people are living near to the sea, like mm. on inside of Australian territory. So what, why is that clear? So Australia is a big country. Geographically, it's a very big country. It's about the size of the USA, same size as the USA, but obviously a lot, a lot less people because we all live on the coast because in the center is just desert. It's very hard to live. It's very hot. It's really hot, really, really hot. It doesn't really rain much. There's no rain about. So it's very hostile conditions in the center of Australia. Um, actually, a big part of Australia is desert. But on the east coast and on the bottom of the west coast is, especially where we have our mountain ranges, we get a lot of nice rains and you, we actually have a lot of beautiful landmarks. So in terms of visiting Australia, there is a lot of natural beauty spots around Australia that you can actually visit as well. Even going into the outback, like Alice Springs, um, I'm not sure if you guys know of uh, Ayers Rock. It's a giant rock in the middle of Australia. Um, we used to be able to climb it, but I think we can't do that anymore, but it's actually very pretty there, um, which is in the middle of the desert. Um, but there's plenty of things that you can do and see in your off time. It's not just about living in Sydney, you go down the coast and you can see some really beautiful beaches um, and really nice, fantastic nature spots as well. Yeah. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, exactly. So the reason why there's not much people in the middle is just desert. Hard to live, hostile. Hostile to live, fun to visit. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. If I want to get Sydney in Australia, what do I have to do? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, in the top of my head, I'm not really sure. I think you need to, okay, so I think there's a process. You need to first, if you get a job in Australia, you need to apply, or you can apply for permanent residency. So you'll probably need to do a series of, um, firstly, make sure that you have a job, have an income test, and then you'll probably have to do some tests, okay? Um, to apply for permanent residency. And you probably need to pay a fee as well. Once you're a permanent resident for, I think, a specific period of time, you can then apply to become a citizen. So that's the process. I'm not 100% sure because I was born in Australia and I never had to go through it. But I do know some of my friends when I was doing my PhD, they became permanent residences after they finished their PhD. They did a postdoc and they were working at UTS for a few years. They got their um, permanent residency. And I think not long after that, they actually applied for the citizenship and they got it. So I think all you really need to do is make sure that you have a, a good job, um, make sure that you're, you, can, you, know, you have a good English proficiency 
to do some tests and you can probably apply for citizenship after a few years. I just don't know exactly the time frame. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much the process. So you can definitely get citizenship. Yeah. Um, as your opinion, uh, what kind of part-time job uh, foreign students can do in Australia or it's helpful for them to buy as a part-time job in Australia? I think definitely. Um, yeah. So in terms of UTS, it might be limited while you're doing undergrad. As I mentioned before, there's a couple of options, but getting a part-time job would be quite easy. You can get many part-time jobs in Australia. There's a lot of jobs in hospitality and things like that available, um, and you can work part-time. I think, well, I think having a part-time job and completing your degree shows that you're capable of working hard and still achieving the results. So I think even having you know, a job at you know, maybe like a supermarket or something like that just to make some, generate some income is totally fine. Um, in terms of helping your degree, that's more internships and things like that and or research projects within that course. So, yeah, so you can definitely get things like this. Um, but I'm pretty sure internships, they're quite low paying to begin with. So if you, if you go to Australia, it's actually a good idea to get a part-time job, but there is a restrictions on how many hours you can work because obviously you're there to study. Um, so you need to make sure you're completing your study. But I believe you can still work 20 hours per week, something like this, in any, in any format. So if you find a job in your industry or in your, you know, what your course you're going down, that's perfect because you're building experience um, while studying. You're really proving that later on you have this ability to do multiple things and, and good time management and again, good skill set. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Big opportunity for us to have big names from Australia, Ashkin Global and uh, the, all the decorations and all the celebration is all for you. Thank you very much. Uh, something for you here for much uh, Let me know. That's, that's a. That's really nice.